Whenever there is a serious murder case in society, it always arouses the indignation of the public, shouting that the murderer should be sentenced to death. At that moment, the Coalition Against the Death Penalty that advocated the abolition of the death penalty often became the target of public opinion. The public questioned, why does this kind of coalition always support murderers and only protect the human rights of the perpetrators? How about the human rights of the murdered victims? Spending taxpayers' money to keep a bunch of murderers in jail is a waste of public funds, etc. In fact, the emergence of the Coalition Against the Death Penalty is based on three main reasons, the primacy of human rights, the imperfection of the law and social system, and the irreversible loss of life. As long as the laws are made by human beings and the courts are made up of people, there are bound to be loopholes and misjudgments. Even if the chance of miscarriage is only 0.0001%, there are still people who will be unjustly imprisoned for it, and once the death penalty is executed, an innocent precious life will disappear forever in the world, with no possibility of making up for it. All in all, some people's opinion is to execute the murderer as soon as possible to bring justice back to the victims and prevent murder cases from ever happening again, while one of the main positions of the coalition against the death penalty is to stand in the perspective of defending human rights and do not want innocent people to be treated as criminals and executed. The starting points of the two are different, but both make sense. There are more factors that need to be considered when deciding whether to abolish the death penalty, such as whether it is reasonable to pay life for life, whether the death penalty can stop crimes, whether the state has the right to kill, etc. Here I won't talk about those intricate causal relationships but focus on revealing one thing, I understand the need for the coalition against the death penalty to exist. Why? Please listen to me tell a story about Chu Yuan and the Fisherman. Chu Yuan was an aristocrat of the state of Chu Kingdom during the Warring States period of China. He was banished by the King of Chu due to the slander of traitorous officials, and his motherland also faced the fate of subjugation. Chu Yuan was banished and then wandered to the riverside of the Miluo River, murmuring poems. Disheveled and emaciated. A fisherman saw him and asked, Aren't you His Excellency the Minister? How did you end up here? Chu Yuan said, For all the world is muddy, I alone am clean, when all men are drunk, I alone am sober, that's why I was banished. The fisherman said. A sage does not deal with matters with a rigid attitude but adapts to this world and moves on with time. Since the whole world is muddy, why don't you beat up the mud and stir up waves? Since all men are drunk, why don't you lap at their lees and drink some leftover wine? Why do you deliberate deeply and impose high standards upon yourself, only to cause your own exile? Chu Yuan replied. I have heard that those who have just rinsed their hair must flick off the dust on their hats, and those who have just taken a bath must shake off the dirt from their clothes. One does not sully his own cleanliness with filthiness. I would rather jump into the river and be buried in the bellies of the fishes than suffer my own purity to be covered by the dust and dirt of the worldliness. Hearing this, the fisherman smiled and began rowing away, singing as he went. When the water of the river is clear, it can be used to wash the chinstrap of my hat. When the water of the river is turbid, it can be used to wash my feet. Thus he left, and they never exchanged another word. And Chu Yuan drowned himself in the river. It's the fifth day of the fifth month of the Chinese lunar calendar. The villagers paddled boats on the river to search for his body but failed. 
So they splashed the water with their paddles and beat drums to distract the fish and evil spirits away. They also threw rice wrapped in bamboo slips into the river to feed Chu Yuan's spirit. Legend has it that during the Han Dynasty, a man named O Chu met a man who called himself His Excellency the Minister. He told O Chu, all the rice that everyone has sent in these years has been stolen and eaten by the dragon in the river. Please wrap the rice with neem leaves and bind them with colorful threads. These two things are what the dragon is most afraid of. O Chu and the villagers did as he said. Today, people commemorate Chu Yuan's sacrifice every year at the Duan Wu Festival, the fifth day of the fifth month of the Chinese lunar calendar by dragon boat racing eating zongzi, which is rice wrapped into three-cornered bamboo leaves packages. Back to the topic, the words of Chu Yuan and the fishermen reflect two completely different attitudes toward life. In fact, there is no absolute right or wrong. Chu Yuan was like a maverick, actively took action and took the rise and fall of the country as his own responsibility and did not hesitate to sacrifice his life at the last moment to stick to his own character, while the fisherman did not ask for right or wrong, he just followed the trend and he can compromise with reality at any time. If they were born nowadays, I am afraid that Chu Yuan would be a misfit with his voice still crying in the wildness, while the fisherman would be a high EQ and a popular emotion management master. Some religions regard suicide as a sin, and people who lives in modern times may consider Chu Yuan's suicide as a cowardly act. But why only Chu Yuan can be admired and commemorated by later generations for more than 2,300 years? I think it's because Chu Yuan refused to go along with any others in their evil deeds and he was unwilling to make even the slightest concession, so his death had its inevitability, showing a noble personality and thus becoming a model. He represents an ideal of the highest moral standard that is difficult for people to achieve. Chu Yuan's personality is like a gleam of light in the darkness. If even this light is extinguished, then the world will have only eternal darkness. Here I am not comparing the coalition against the death penalty to Chu Yuan and the mortals to the fishermen. Although I can't fully agree with the abolition of the death penalty, I feel grateful and understand that there are still a small number of people who are not generally acknowledged by the majority, fighting hard for the rights of another smaller group of people, looking for a glimmer of hope in an imperfect society, and trying to prove their inner ideal. Without them, there would always be lives wrongly judged to die, and even if the misjudged victims are few, their lives are as important as yours and mine. If one day, the whole world is wrong and only you are right, do you still have the courage to insist that your choice is right, when you are under overwhelming pressure from the public? If your answer is yes, are you willing to face the consequences that come with it? Or will you choose to compromise, settle things down, and give up your own ideas when faced with public opinion? Like many politicians, they have no intention of admitting what they have said nor taking any responsibility. Of course, while adhering to your ideals, don't forget to discover blind spots you might ignore or you can't see from other people's viewpoints, and try to think about them carefully before you start to take action. After all, when people have absolute self-confidence like Chu Yuan, they usually do not have a noble character like Chu Yuan, and if they cannot take a comprehensive view of the whole situation and insist on going their own way, it may eventually lead to catastrophic results. This is today's story. Do you like it? Do you agree with Chu Yuan or the fisherman? Please leave your comment. If you like Asian classical stories or want to know more about Asian culture, please don't forget to subscribe for more new videos.